Okay, well welcome and good to see you again. Uh, we're going to change gears just a little bit and we're going to uh, take a look at geology just for a real short time because it's going to help us to understand uh, fossils and fossil records and the evolution of life from a long time ago to today. So we need a little introduction to geology and uh, what better place to take a look at the geology to start with in this is the Grand Canyon. Uh, in the Grand Canyon, the geology is just laid bare you, uh, right in front of you as you uh, look to see uh, th these layers. And to me, it just brings up questions. You know, if I compare this layer to the one up above it, as the scenery changes, you know, which one's older? Which ones are younger? Uh, how are they different from each other? Uh, it's just a, a great place to, to go and take a, a, a look at um, changes over time. You know, you, you can see, wow, this place uh, wasn't always like this. You know, how long did it take to, to create this uh, superb uh, formations? And so if you've never been there, it's a, it's a great place to go. Hike down to the bottom, hike through the canyons. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, when we talk about ages, uh, one of the things that we talk about uh, is the idea of um, relative age. And uh, by that, what we mean is this layer compared to the layer below it. Uh, which one's older? Which one's younger? Okay? It'd be like if I asked you about your brothers and sisters. Are you younger than them or are you older than them? That's relative age. It doesn't tell me, if you say you're, you're younger than your brother, it, that doesn't tell me how old you actually are. It just tells me how old you are compared to somebody else. And we do the same thing often with rocks. It's relative age. Which uh, layer is older or younger than another layer? Absolute age would tell me exactly how old you are. Uh, you're 12 years old. The rock is 150 million years old. That's absolute age. Relative age compared to another a layer, um, absolute age takes a look at exactly how old it is. Well, then the next one we, thing we might take a look at is the different types of rock. And uh, this is igneous rock. Igneous rocks uh, are f from magma. This is uh, uh, magma that's or that's made it to the surface, so it's lava flowing across the surface, and then as it cools, it forms new rock. This is in Hawaii. You saw it crossing the ho the highway there. Uh, this is not the kind of rock that has uh, fossils in it. You can see that a fossil would not last very long in, in, in this rock. So this is an example of an igneous rock. That's one of the three kinds of rocks we're going to look at. Okay, so igneous rocks start as uh, magma, and then they cool and form solid rocks. Sometimes that cooling happens uh, deeper within the surface. This is a volcanic plug. Uh, so the volcano erupted. This cooled uh, below the surface. The surrounding rock eroded away, leaving uh, this uh, igneous rock exposed up above. This is Devil's Tower in Wyoming. Again, another great place to go where you can see the geology and it, and it, and it brings the questions out. You know, how did this get there? How did it form? Why is it different than the surrounding area? So this is another example of an igneous rock. The next kind of rock we're going to take a look at are uh, sedimentary rocks. Uh, sedimentary rocks, if we take a look at uh, how uh, they form, sedimentary rocks uh, form, uh, you have the, the eroding surface, and uh, that eroding surface Turn this part off. The eroding surface uh, runs down the streams and collects uh, in down here in a sea or a, or a lake bed or in the ocean, uh, and it forms a layer on top of another layer that was there, on top of another layer that was there, on top of another layer that was there. So this is your sedimentary rock that's that's forming. It's uh, eroded material that comes down and gets compressed and cemented together. Uh, and that's your sedimentary rock. Uh, the sedimentary rock, one example of it is uh, limestone. A uh, limestone is a great place to find fossils. Sedimentary rock is where you're going to find your fossils. You're not going to find the igneous rock. You're not going to find fossils in the metamorphic rocks that get destroyed in there typically. Uh, but you will find it in your sedimentary rock. So here's some uh, fish fossils within limestone. If you compress the limestone, if you turn it into a metamorphic rock, metamorphic rock is when you take heat and pressure, or 
you you can't do it. But when the earth takes heat and pressure and it and it c compresses uh, the material and it changes it structurally, uh, limestone changes into marble. Uh, and another example of a metamorphic rock is this nice. You'll find this uh, in the uh, uh, rock beds, creek beds, river beds around here fairly commonly. So we have igneous and sedimentary and now metamorphic rocks. And then uh, you can end up with uh, this rock cycle. And the rock cycle talks about um, how you change from one kind of rock to another. Now it doesn't necessarily go in just a circle. You can go from one to the other back again and uh, so it can go from igneous to sedimentary to igneous to sedimentary to metamorphic to sedimentary. So it's not necessarily going in a, in a single circle. Um, so we can have this uh, igneous rock uh, that comes maybe up in uh, forms at the surface and then you have erosion bringing the material on down forming a sedimentary rock down here in, in the uh, bottom of the sea, and then maybe this gets down and gets turned into a metamorphic rock, which gets uh, uplifted, which gets eroded to form a sedimentary rock again, which gets pushed deep within the earth where it turns into magma. Maybe it comes up and forms a, a plug like the one uh, for Devil's Tower. And so you get this rock cycle where one kind of rock can change into another. Okay. So now you have these rocks are forming. So we were looking at uh, uh, the Grand Canyon and the idea of, of uh, uh, rock formation. And so we say, OK, well, what about this layer compared to this layer? Which one's older and which one's younger? So the law of super, or the principle of superposition says that when these sedimentary layers form, the oldest ones are on the bottom, and the uh, newer ones are up here at the top. So th Younger ones, right? Younger ones are up at the top. Older ones are at the bottom. And you can imagine as you were looking at how that would form. You'd have to have this bottom one form first, and the next one form on top of it, and the next one form on top of that. Assuming there's nothing else weird that actually uh, happened. Uh, one of the things that um, uh, can happen to change things. Uh, is after these uh, layers form, you can get an igneous rock thrust within it. So here's our oldest layer of sedimentary, there's our middle age, here's our newest layer, and then this igneous rock gets thrust through this. Here comes the igneous rock. Well, for the igneous rock to come through it, this rock had to have already been there. And so the igneous rock is younger than the surrounding rock. And then in this particular diagram, they show some sort of uh, faulting so that you get this shift in position. But let's not worry about that. So we have old, middle age, younger, and then this igneous rock gets sent through it. And um, that's even younger than the surrounding rock. Okay. So by looking at the, at the position, it gives us an idea of the relative age of the rocks. We don't know how old they are. We, but we do know how old they are compared to each other. And this can get uh, substantially more um, complex. Here's the Grand Canyon, and you got all kinds of things happening in here. Nonconformities and disconformities and unconformities, uh, and that can um, change things up a little bit. The last concept I'm going to deal with in this video is the idea of index fossils. Uh, index fossils help us determine the age of, uh, of materials. Uh, sometimes it can help with relative age. Sometimes it can help with the absolute age. The key on an index fossil, fossil has to be fairly common. It can't be found in just one area. Otherwise, it's not going to help us. It's got to be found in a variety of areas. Uh, but it also needs to just be found within a really short period of time. If it was that particular organism th lived through a whole bunch of times, then that's not going to help us uh, determine the age. So index fossils, let's say, take a look at number six. Let's say that was an index fossil. It only lived during this uh, time period. It was not going to be found in the other layers, but it can be found in different places. So maybe over here we say, okay, he, here's this fossil. 
it's found only within this this particular time period and then we're looking at fossils miles away and we find that fossil again different kind of rock but the same fo organism fossilized and so we know okay this layer here and this layer here are the same relative age and then that helps us to figure out the age of the surrounding layers and then if we get lucky and we're able to actually age this let's say we decide that it's that that rock was formed 120 million years ago now when we come over here and we find the same fossil we know that it's got we can get a better idea of the absolute age okay so index fossils are fairly common found in a bunch of places in terms of area but they're uncommon in terms of time they only lived in a short period of time and so when we find them we know that they they relate to uh, a, a specific time period and sometimes we can do absolute age and sometimes we're just doing relative age that this area and this area were being formed at about the same time okay so there was a lot here we started off talking about relative age and absolute age we looked at igneous rocks, molten ones, sedimentary rocks formed uh, from deposition, formed deposit after erosion of the material formed in layers. We looked at uh, metamorphic rocks formed under heat and pressure. We looked at the rock cycle, the idea that one can get changed into the other. Uh, we looked at the law of superposition, oldest on the bottom when we're dealing with sedimentary rocks, youngest on the top, and if there's an igneous intrusion, it's younger than the surrounding rocks. And then we finished off taking a look at these index fossils that uh, can help us determine the relative abs or absolute rate ages of rock too. So there's a lot. If you need to watch certain sections of the video again, make sure that you do that. Take a look in your notes. Make sure you filled in the uh, the blank spots, got your examples and everything that I asked for. Uh, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.